Now I've still got my copyright and footer to deal with, but I also wanted to try out one more thing with our first layout example. So far we've just been using background colors in our block tags to stylize them, but we can also use images as well. If I go out and look at our working files folder, you can see that we've got a couple of images in here. We've got one called Streetcar JPEG that we used in one of the earlier files, and we've got a background stripe. I'll try out the streetcar one first on the main content area. Let's go back over to our document, and first let me take care of the footer. I'm just going to add in a quick footer tag selector. We'll add some braces for rules. And first I'm just going to set up a background color for this one. This time I'll use a light gray. Now I also want the text to align in the center and be a little bit smaller, so I'll use a text align property. Set that to center. And we'll use a font size property. And set that to something like 10 pixels. Now by placing those two properties on the footer tag itself, any text that appears in the footer will appear centered and smaller, unless those styles are overridden by any other rules. Now before we get to the background image, let's just save our changes. And we'll test the page to see how the copyright footer section looks. You can see it got dropped to the bottom, it's small text and it is centered, but look at the light gray color that we've selected. It seems to stretch all the way up to the top. Now remember the one thing that we haven't set on our copyright is any kind of clear setting, and right now it's not clearing either of these two elements. The text is clearing the elements in the page, but the block itself is not clearing it. So let's go fix that first. I'm just going to go down to the bottom of my footer. I'm going to add in a clear property. And we only have left floated elements in our document so far, but to be safe, I'll just set it up for both. Let's save that change. And now when we go out and refresh our page, you can see that the footer block is indeed clearing both of those left floated elements up to the top. Now it's time to take a look at the main content area and try out a background image. Let's go back over to our document. And I'll go down to where we set up the main content ID style. And we'll just add in a background image property. For this, we're going to need to specify what image we want to use. And so we're going to need a URL tag and some parentheses. The path to our file we should put in quotes, so I'll start those out. And I'm just going to use the streetcar JPEG we saw before. I'll close out the quotes and the parentheses. And notice the path to our image is just the name of the file, since both of our documents are in the same folder. Now I'll end out this style rule with a semicolon, just like we always do. We'll save our changes, and let's go see what it looks like. When I refresh the page, you can see that our streetcar image has been loaded in as a background for that main content div, which stretches from the top to the bottom. And remember, we left floated it, so it's sitting right up against the nav element over here on the side. You can see what happens to the picture. The picture just gets repeated until it fills the entire area. Now obviously some pictures are going to be better than others as backgrounds. This one competes with the text a lot, so it would need to be lightened up or adjusted to make a better background, but we can definitely see how the settings work. By default, the image will simply repeat until it fills the whole area, but we can control that with the background repeat property. Let me go back into our document and we'll try that out. I'll add the background repeat property below the background image property, and we can use several different settings for this. One would be repeat-x. Now let's save that change. And when we go over and refresh our page, we can see that the image is still repeated in the x direction, but not in the y direction on the page. Now, of course, there's a repeat y as well. I'll make that change, save it, and we'll go back and refresh our page. And now you can see that the image repeats vertically in the y direction, but not in the x direction. Now, a final setting would be no repeat at all. And for that, we set a value of no-repeat. Let's save that change, and we'll try it out too. Now you can see that I only see my image once in the page, no matter how big the div that we dropped it in is. Now I did mention that some images are going to be better for others as background. There's also some interesting strategies that you can use to set up your images. I've got another image down in our file here at the bottom called background stripe JPEG. And I'm just going to open it up in the preview window so we can see what it looks like. 
Now you can see this particular image is a long thin stripe with some gradient colors applied to it that flow directly from the left to the right of the page. Now the strategy here is to use this image and the repeat settings to create a pattern. And for this example, I actually didn't need to have this image quite so tall. By having it only a few pixels tall, we can save a lot on the size of the image. And by using the repeat settings, we can have this image fill an area that's as big as we want it to be. So let's go back out and swap this image for our streetcar image. I'm also going to set this up so that our image is used all the way across the page. So let's go back over in here and I'll remove the background image that we had set up in the main content area. I'll get rid of the repeat setting as well. And we'll go into the page setting and we'll add in a background image there. I'll set up the URL again with parentheses and quotes. And this time we're going to use the background stripe.jpg. Again, it's in the same folder, so we don't have to add any more path information. I'll close up the quotes and the parentheses, set a semicolon, and we're going to set up the repeat option. Again, the property is background repeat. And I'm going to use repeat dash Y, so it'll only repeat vertically. Now we've set that up on the whole page itself, so let's save our changes and we'll see what we get. Even though I set it up on the page, I've got background colors on two divs, the header and the footer, and those override it. So we only see our background image showing up in the area where we don't have background colors applied. You can also see that the repeat of the image creates a bar in my text. And since we've got it set up to repeat, I can have the page be any size we want to if we added more paragraphs or content.